Hi friends, hello, hi, how are you? I hope you guys are having a good day. So today we're gonna be talking about a topic that I personally don't really wanna talk about. Um, I don't really want to discuss it. I've had a hard time. Well, let's do like full transparency. I already filmed this video and it really just turned into yelling and I don't wanna yell. <laughs> I don't wanna come across as like incredibly angry about the situation because I feel like then sometimes the message gets lost in what I'm trying to say. And because this topic is so important, I not only wanna do the topic justice. I want to do the victims that are coming forward justice in explaining this and talking about it. So that's first things first. If I seem a little off in this video, it's because I am. Um, number one. Number two, I want to give a trigger warning for this video. And I say that seriously because um, as somebody who had pretty much almost an exact same thing happen to them as the victim in this story, reading the insider article that I'm going to be talking about, hearing the allegations, and also seeing what what unfolded from that and how um, David Dobrik and the vlog squad exploited a girl exploited a girl um, in that way. It was very, very, very difficult for me personally having gone through that. So from anyone else who's gone through something like that, I would just not even like protect yourself basically um don't don't feel like you have to be informed on this particular topic just know that um i wouldn't support the vlog squad at all anymore that's really all i could say if you don't want to watch this particular one personally i found it to be very um upsetting and triggering and sad um and that's the other reason it took me a while to talk about this so that's first things first um i want to briefly just explain what's going on if you have no idea what's been happening um i think i'm going to timestamp this video so you should be able to just skip if you don't want the recap but i really want to come at this video from a place of not really like screaming <laughs> about how much I think David Dobrik sucks. And instead, I would like to address a lot of these sort of common misconceptions and sort of common rebuttals to a lot of the things I've been seeing online. Um, I want to address that. I want to address David's apology and explain, instead of just saying, oh, it was trash, I want to like explain why it was trash because it really was so bad and so much worse than I think people are even realizing. And on top of that, I really want to discuss as, you know, and I think this is a more open discussion because I don't have an answer, really want to discuss why we allowed this all to happen as a as as like watchers of this stuff like why have we seen all of these David Dobrik videos for years they've always been on the trending page he's been grown to be one of the biggest creators on the platform and now all of this footage is coming out of videos that have been live on his channel for years that have millions of views that nobody saw a problem with until this moment um, and I want to talk about how David Dobrik himself really created that culture of normalizing really horrific behavior so if you're down for that buckle in because we got a bit of a long video. Um, first thing I want to talk about is the situation with the name that the insider article gave her was Hannah. So that's how I'm going to refer to her as. Um, but I will link the insider article down below. It is behind a paywall, but I think it's worth it. I think it's like a dollar to unlock it and then you do the monthly subscription, but you could just cancel that if you want to just read the article. Um, but I think it's worth it to pay the dollar just to see a girl who was in a David Dobrik vlog in 2018 is coming forward and saying that in that vlog, she was actually and that one of the vlog squad members named Dirty Dom um, had sexual relations with her when she was unable to consent because she was too drunk to consent. At one point, she was even unconscious and asleep, and he still proceeded to have unconsenting course with her. And she has come forward about this story now and uh, basically showed how David sort of misrepresented the encounter on his vlog channel and how he made it seem like she had a fun, like, great time having a three-way with one of her friends and Dom and how, you know, it was so awesome for him and it was so awesome for the girls and how the girls were just fun and, like, whatever. And he made it into this sort of bit. In reality, this girl was having probably one of the worst, most traumatizing nights of her life. She and her friends who were kind of recounting the story to insiders said that she was so intoxicated that she they had to come and like pick her up off the floor after the incident uh they had to force her to throw up because she was so intoxicated they said the next morning she still did not remember what happened even though they told her multiple times so she had no memory of this encounter i think the initial plot of the video was that dom put on his instagram story that he wanted to have like a four-way or a five-way with a bunch of girls this group of girls responded they didn't really have any intention of doing it they just wanted 
wanted to meet some YouTubers. When they got there and that became clear that they weren't actually interested in doing that, it was said by Trisha Paytas and was backed up by the girls that were there that David Dobrik said that he wanted his friends to go buy them alcohol, even though they were underage, to loosen them up so they would be more fun for his vlog. And then it was said that Jeff and Todd, who are two Vlog Squad members, went to go buy the alcohol, brought it to the girls, and that it seemed like Dom in particular was feeding, especially this one girl, Hannah, all of these drinks with the intention of getting her drunk so that he could convince her to have with him. And in the actual vlog, David said in the voiceover, the girls weren't interested, they didn't really want to do it. But after some major negotiation and master, you know, skills, Dom convinced two of the girls to go do it. So even in the video right there, he's literally admitting to the fact that the girls were not interested and that they had to negotiate to have sex with somebody, which it just is a little friendly reminder. If you have to negotiate with somebody to have sex with them, that is not consensual. <laughs> That's not consent. Consent is not, well, she said yes the 11th time I asked. That is not a consenting situation, just so we're very clear. Saying yes after being pressured is not consent. I want to make that just so abundantly clear. So the real thing David is being accused of is obviously, you know, giving underage girls alcohol to make them more willing to sleep with his friend. And the other thing that he's guilty of, obviously, is being complicit in a sexual as are everybody who was in that room. Now that's the first situation and that's the first big thing that he has really been accused of and this seems to be the situation that is impacting him the most. Um, and the other situation that has been going on for a few weeks is one that I already touched on in a video I made like last week about power imbalances on YouTube and it's basically talking about his friend who was in the vlog squad, Seth, who he pulled this prank. It was not a prank, it was like literally pulled this prank on his friend where he said that Corinna, who was one of the girls in the vlog squad, was going to be wearing this kind of old man mask and it was going to make out with Seth, but then it was actually Jason. It was a person that Seth didn't consent to making out with, who he made out with. And when Seth found out, he was very upset and David put the clip in anyway. The video got like 10 million views and Seth has now been coming forward more and more about not only that encounter with David, but just experiences in general with David of him like not being the best person. Up until this Insider article launched that was sort of discussing these allegations against Dom and in turn the vlog squad. Um, the main people that were talking about this stuff with David Dobrik and the main people that were sort of discussing the horrible stuff that he had been doing was Trisha Paytas and Ethan Klein from H3H3. They have a podcast they do together called Frenemies, but Ethan has also sort of made it his mission to really shed light and bring awareness to everything that's happening on his other podcasts as well. He does like live streams with Gila and they do their own podcast. So he's been talking about this a lot and he's been bringing a lot of attention to this situation. Now, I think the reason that that has been somewhat of a problem in this situation is because not so much with Ethan, but I think the reason that people don't take Trisha Paytas's word as seriously is because it's it's pretty apparent that there's some type of like bias with her. Obviously she used to date Nate Jason Nash. It's not a secret. They had a very messy breakup. It's pretty publicized all over the internet. And I also think with Trisha, it's very easy to do the whataboutism thing because Trisha can say, well, David Dobrik did this, 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 and this, but it's very easy to look at Trisha Paytas and be like, well, you did this, 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 and this. So that's how fans of David Dobrik have been combating Trisha is anytime she says, well, David Dobrik did this, her fans say, well, you did this and that's worse. Um, which I would just like to say, if your sole base of an argument is a whataboutism, is a what about what you did instead in deflection, if that's the sole basis of your argument is deflection, you don't have a lot of ground to stand on anymore. The deflection and whataboutisms can only get you so far. I do understand the problem with Trisha being kind of the main pioneer of this. And I also think there's a lot of room to criticize Trisha and all of this, which I'm going to get into in a minute. But I do want to acknowledge that first, that I think because Trisha and Ethan have been the people that were really spearheading this, it definitely caused a lot of people to be more skeptical. The Vlog Squad has actually responded a little bit, which normally they don't respond to anything. However, it's very clear that this, they had to respond to some of this. They really responded to the Seth stuff first. Scotty Sire put out a video. And again, I touched on this in my video last week, but just to summarize, Scotty Sire, who was probably out of all of the Vlog Squad members, members, one of the more sort of like likable vlog squad members. He's never really done anything. He's a very chill, sort of relaxed guy. I saw a lot of comments on his video, especially when it was first posted, being like, oh, you know, when Scotty's mad that that means that stuff's going down, which is like, yeah, that's why they picked him to represent them. Um, <laughs> 
very calculating. Scotty basically went about things trying to prove that Seth was a liar and was just lying about his experience with David Dobrik for clout. Um, his argument doesn't hold up at all though when you realize that the very first instance that this prank happened, because this prank happened twice where they convinced Seth to make out with somebody that like wasn't really the person he thought he was making out with. The prank happened twice. The first time you cannot prove that he consented to that prank because he didn't consent to it. The vlog squad can try to sort of twist that narrative as much as they want, but regardless of anything, nobody can prove that, so they just glaze over that and they try to say, well, Seth, you know, said he would do the prank again, which is like, okay, let's talk about that. In Scotty's video, he had David provide a voice note where Seth said to David in a voice note, um, I would be down to do this prank a third time. I'm more open not minded now. Like, I'd love to get some clout for doing this, right? Which seems damaging to Seth. Like, it seems a little damaging to his case, except when you think about the statistics that support the fact that victims of abuse of any kind constantly go back to their abusers. And also when you think about the fact that Seth, probably at that point in time, had been cut out and isolated from the vlog squad, had lost a ton of income as a result of the vlog squad no longer supporting him, and was probably incredibly desperate, which is what abusers, like what David Dobrik is, because he is an abuser, it's what abusers thrive on. They thrive off of their victims needing them. They thrive off of people in general needing them. So I don't think that that's as damning of proof as a lot of people do, because to me, that's actually incredibly sad. It's incredibly sad to me that Seth probably felt so desperate that he felt like he had to go back to somebody who he knew was abusing him just so he could get a little bit of extra clout so he could make some money. Like, I bet that was probably really humiliating and re-traumatizing for him to have to do that, as it is for most people who are in those types of situations. Now, Scott's video, again, just because of the nature of the video, there was a lot of victim-blaming language. There was a lot of, like, well, he just changed his mind and then regretted it. He's only accusing us for clout. He's only accusing us for XYZ. Um, and Scott ended up actually taking the video down and doing a notes app apology, basically being like, I'm sorry I did that. I didn't mean to use any sort of victim blaming language. I didn't mean to hurt you guys, which is like, I, I'm not even going to address all of that, honestly. And then, so Scott put out his video. Trisha and Ethan sort of responded to that. But Trisha and Ethan also exposed on the Frenemies podcast that there was an article coming out from Insider about David asking people to go buy, it, I think the gist of what it, it seemed like on the Frenemies podcast it was that David had his friends go buy alcohol for this underage girl. That was like the gist of what we thought initially the Insider article was actually going to be about. And Trisha discussed on the podcast with Ethan that she was sort of cooperating this person's story and everything. David's lawyers were kind of trying to invalidate Trisha and make her seem like an unreliable witness. Um, and I don't say that to sort of defend Trisha. I say that because in that frenemies interview, she said, David and everybody else involved in this situation knows that this article is coming. They have been reached out to by Insider. Insider has reached out to all of these people. They're aware that the article is coming. So the day that the article dropped, the day that the Insider article dropped, David Dobrik dropped this two minute and 30 second let's talk video which I know this joke has already been made a thousand times, but it's so insane to me that he made a video titled Let's Talk and turned off the comments and turned off the likes to dislikes immediately to immediately remove any sort of talking or discourse that could happen through that video. I also think it's just cowardice, not even like, oh, clever. It's cowardice to upload that on his least subscribed to channel. He literally uploaded it on the Views podcast channel to try and suppress people from seeing that video, which backfired immensely because YouTube, who will just suck the of anything Dobrik, okay, that was too much, because YouTube, who will just absolutely ride or die for their creators who make them a lot of money regardless of anything, trended the video. When I clicked on the video, it was trending at number eight, but I didn't get a screenshot. I saw that T-Spell got a screenshot of it trending at number 12, so I know I'm not crazy because they untrended it very quickly, but it was trending for a short amount of time. David's video is two minutes and 30 seconds of David I, I don't know a nicer way to say this, but it was literally just such bullshit. It was the type of apology that we are seeing time and time and time again from these influencers that is literally just an apology to service as a bookmark for their fans to reference when defending them. There is no substance. There is no understanding. There is no actually owning up to anything. There's none of that. It is purely made so his 16-year-old fans can say, David apologized. Go look at 
hit the video. This is the bookmark for you guys to defend me. That's what that was. This is the bookmark to defend me now. I have said the words, I am sorry, and now you can defend me. Now the people who are going to defend me will defend me. And in the video, and this is what I find to be so sick and twisted, because remember, he knew that the Insider article was coming out. That's why he's making this video. It's not only to address Seth, it's going to be to kind of address everything, because he knew that this article was coming. Also, I think it's really important to note that in the Insider article, David's lawyers literally said that this was going to be his response. They, they didn't give a quote to Insider because they said David is going to be addressing this on his own and by himself. So that implies that this video was also supposed to be addressing the situation that happened with Hannah. In this video, he says a couple of things that really stood out to me. The first one being, I've made over 600 videos. Implying that, okay, I've made over 600 videos, guys. Of course, something like essay or R word or racist statements, sexist statements, homophobic statements. Like, of course, after making 600 videos, all of those things will exist in my content. And guess what? I've made over 600 videos. I know plenty of creators who have made over 600 videos. Find me those clips where they have filmed a girl being essayed and posted it to the internet as if it was a fun little threesome. Find me the video from other creators. This is not like an oopsie, I made one offhand bad comment. Cause like, yeah, sure, that happens. This is a pattern of behavior and a history that is being shown through his old content. So right off the bat, he very clearly doesn't understand or get why people are so angry. The other thing that really stood out to me, and this is where I got irate, what, and you can tell, <laughs> I need to breathe because I am getting really heated and it's really just because he knew that this insider article with Hannah's story was dropping. And instead of addressing that story, and instead of apologizing to her, instead of owning up to what happened there, instead of all of that, instead of anything like that, he equated what happened to her, he equated that to her regretting being in the vlog. It was for her and for Seth. He basically said, he didn't mention anything about them not getting consent or anything. He said, sometimes people regret the vlogs later down the line, and so I just removed the vlogs. And I think a lot of people think that that message was meant for Seth and was meant for the Seth situation. I don't think it was just for Seth. I think it was for both situations because this girl, Hannah, had messaged Dom two years after the fact and said, can you please take this video down? Remembering one of the worst nights of my life in this context is really damaging to my healing process. And Dom said, okay, sure thing. Because <laughs> he's he's a monster and said, okay, sure thing. And David took the video down. So he's not only referring to the Seth situation. I think he genuinely thinks that this whole situation is this, this girl regretting being in the vlog in the first place. I don't think he gets the serious trauma that he has been causing this girl for years. I think he just thinks, oh, she just regretted it. So I took the video down. It's the same thing with Seth. I don't think he cares about the years of trauma that he put him through. He just thinks, oh, he regretted it after the fact. So whatever, guess I'll take it down. Belittling what happened to both of them as as well, they just regretted it later. They regretted it after the fact, is quite literally the argument constantly used against victims of it is constantly what is brought up. We have lawyers saying that to victims in court. Like, it is disgusting and stomach churning that David Dobrik is perpetuating to his millions of fans. Oh, well, both of them, they just, they just regretted it the day after. Sickening, actually. It's, it's literally quite, it's sickening. I, and also, I think it's important to note because words matter. Because in his video, David said, you can take this apology, but also know that I think actions speak louder than words. Listen carefully to that, because he didn't say you can take or leave this apology. He doesn't even give the option when he's speaking that people wouldn't buy this apology, that people wouldn't buy into it. It's, you guys are going to accept this apology from me, but I'm going to prove to you anyway. Like, I'm going to go above and beyond, because I know that you guys are just going to forgive me for this. I know that that everything's gonna be fine for me. So you can take this apology, but also know I'm gonna show you with my actions. And here's what I would like to say about the modern day YouTube apology, because I think we've really forgotten like what the fuck an apology means. So let's go back to basics. Let's go back to kindergarten where we all learned how to apologize. And let's start from there. An apology is not ever, it's never been, think about in your real life, an apology has never been meant to say, I'm sorry, and somebody immediately forgives you. 
everything is forgiven, everything's fine, we're all good, bro, like, we're great, especially for serious stuff. Like, yeah, if I forget to pick up, like, a coffee for my husband on the way home, yeah, I would expect to just say I'm sorry and he just forgive that, sure. But if I break his legs purposefully and I just go, oh, I'm sorry, then yeah, my apology is the benchmark. And this is where I, what I feel like we forget, because David Dobrik did his apology, and immediately, if you were critical of this apology, everybody's like, this is what's wrong with cancel culture. Nobody can ever just apologize. No apology is good enough anymore. You guys are just gonna pick every apology and every explanation apart. Nothing is good enough for this hate mob. No. An apology was never supposed to serve in our society in the way that we speak to each other. An apology is usually not supposed to serve as the forgiving part. The apology is the benchmark. The apology is you simply explaining to whoever you hurt why you hurt them. It is explaining that you have an understanding of why you hurt them. It is explaining that you are aware of the problem, that you are aware of where you screwed up, that you have done some internal thinking and you understand where you screwed up, and that you will know that now so you are going to try to not do it again in the future. If you cannot, in your apology, give a basic, at the start of where we're supposed to do this healing, right? Forgiveness is on this like spectrum, it's this healing process. So if at the start of this healing process, you cannot give and you cannot explain why you fucked up and you cannot say why you fucked up and you cannot explain what you did wrong and you cannot give reasons why you hurt people. If you can't do that, then yeah, the apology is not good enough. The apology, we can't start the watching your actions to see if you've changed part yet because you haven't even properly explained or showed why you screwed up in the first place. It is bananas to me that people don't understand this still in the YouTube space. That I'm sorry, I'm yelling. It is bananas to me that we still don't understand that, that YouTubers still don't understand that, that it's not just an I'm sorry, moving on. It's a I understand why I screwed up, I understand why I hurt you, and now that I've acknowledged that, I would like to begin the path of showing you that I have changed. These YouTubers want to skip over all of that. They want to skip the understanding. They want to skip the explaining. They want to skip all of that, and they want to jump straight into the action part, which is really just not screwing up for a couple of months and waiting for it all to blow over. Like, let's be honest here. So now, David's apology's out, and his fans who are going to defend him no matter what are defending him, but I will say I think that this apology did hurt him, which it should have. It was stupid, it was bullshit, and he didn't even do the basics of Apology 101. He's starting to lose subscribers, people are starting to pay more attention, more media outlets are picking this up and legitimizing Hannah's story and Seth's story, which I think is fantastic. I also just want to say that after I filmed this, Jeff Wittick, who was one of the people accused of buying the girls who were underage alcohol, has made about a 20 minute video addressing the situation. The big takeaway points I wanna take from this is number one, Jeff pretty much adamantly denies that he is the one who bought the alcohol while making it pretty much abundantly clear that he knows who did actually do it. So he is protecting a person who is an accomplice to SA, number one. Number two, Jeff tries to like blame the reporter who broke this story and say that she twisted his words and you know brought him into this because Trisha Paytas and him have beef so Trisha accused him so that's the only reason his name got brought into it and that's why he's getting dragged and he's losing sponsorships because of all this and all of this shit right when in reality Trisha Paytas is not the one who I just want to do some fact checking for him quickly because if he actually read the article Trisha Paytas is not the one who brought his name and put his name out there the friend of the girl who of Hannah was the one who said it was Jeff and Todd who left to go get the alcohol. Trisha Paytas just corroborated that story and agreed that that is what happened. So those are my two big takeaways. I wouldn't even bother watching Jeff's freaking video because it was honestly just him trying to blame the author of the story instead of taking actual accountability for his own actions, which is pretty on par with everything we have seen from the vlog squad. And I would guarantee everything we will continue to see from the vlog squad. 
content, more and more clips are coming out. David Dobrik has recently deleted like hundreds of hours of watch time from his channel, hundreds of millions of views, because he's like mass deleting all of his old videos before people find them. But unfortunately for him, people have been making compilations of his videos for years. So these clips live on. And more and more clips are coming out about the vlog squad. More and more we're seeing the, them just grabbing women's boobs, them laughing because Corinna's like, please stop touching my vagina in public. Like David convincing people with money and bribing people to do these like crazy things that are really sick and weird. More and more stuff is coming out that when you take the individual bit out of the context of the vlog is like horrifying. And I think this gets to one of my first like major big points is like what's horrifying to me is that David Dobrik created this world where all of this was acceptable because these clips have lived on the internet for it's it almost is very eerily similar to Shane Dawson where these clips have lived on the internet for years and low-key people have been calling him and other members of the vlog squad out for years, it just, those people who did that were like ruthlessly attacked for coming out against David. Even Seth, when he first talked about all of this, I think it was a year ago, was just ruthlessly attacked by this David Dobrik mob of fans. David has successfully created this environment where we were watching a girl literally have one of the worst, most horrific nights of her life, and we were thinking it was just a funny, ha ha, she had a threesome. And I think what's so sick to me is that back in like 2017, 2018, I liked David's vlogs. I watched them. I was like a fan of David Dobrik and the vlog squad. I enjoyed the videos. I thought they were really well made. I liked them. Even so far as last year, I still was like, yeah, the videos are definitely a little bit more problematic than I realized, but like, you know, I just hope that he addresses those things. I hope he stops this sort of frat boy energy is what I called it. Now, the more and more things come out, I am horrified because I, I consider myself, and I'm sure a lot of people who like the vlog squad, but now feel like the glass has been shattered I feel like a lot of people consider themselves, I'm pretty socially conscious of these things, yet I, watching those videos in the context that he presented them, didn't really see a whole lot wrong with them. When you put it all together in this four minute and 20 second whirlwind of what's supposed to be this constant humor, I think that sometimes these sick jokes and pranks get really lost. And I think one thing about that that's so interesting is the way that they all sort of lived and communally lived together and communally existed together. Because to them, Dom reaching his hand up a girl's skirt to touch her without his, her consent, that's funny to them. In the video, Corinna is like, please stop, you know, touching me. And Dom is like, we'll put on some pants. And everybody in the room just laughs. Everybody laughs. And that makes you think in your brain, like, oh, nothing's wrong here. Like, everybody's laughing. Even Corinna was laughing, even though she probably didn't find it very funny. The way that he made them gave everybody this idealized version of what their friendship looked like and how everything went about when you, you don't even realize that just like if you look one step deeper into what's happening, it's really sick and gross what's happening. And I think the fact that this was allowed, this was promoted by YouTube, he's won every YouTuber award, he's won Nickelodeon's awards, he has literally been one of the few YouTubers who has been able to transcend the platform of YouTube and start doing mainstream work with shows like Nickelodeon, he's been interviewed by like every major news outlet, he is arguably one of the most successful YouTubers on the platform as far as mainstream recognition, and he got that way by exploiting everybody else around him, by paying them in clout and giving them clout so everybody wanted to continue to be around him. They wanted to continue to be in those videos. And I think the really sick thing about all of this is I still low-key don't think that David Dobrik thinks he did anything wrong. It's not that I don't think he understands what happened. I don't think he thinks he did anything wrong. I, it's a pretty apparent based on his apology that he doesn't think he did anything wrong. I don't think that he truly believes that that he's made a lot of mistakes. And that's where I wanted to get into sort of some common just questions and critiques I have been seeing online about this situation and just kind of providing the way that I see it, I guess. The biggest thing I'm seeing is in regards to Hannah and the Insider article. People basically saying, why is she just coming forward now? This happened years ago. Why is she just coming out now? Um, I think it, that if you've done any sort of research into trauma and the way that it affects your brain, it's pretty obvious why she didn't come forward earlier. Number one, both David and Dom and the entire vlog squad sort of 
had this like monopoly on the inter internet. They were incredibly popular, well liked, and praised 90% of the time for stuff that they did. Um, they almost seemed this like this sort of untouchable group of people. I think it's fairly obvious that she knew she would get a lot of hate and criticism and that even if she tried to stay anonymous, there would be major ramifications for her coming forward. And also I think sometimes it just takes you a few years to be able to talk about things. Like I know for stuff that I've gone through, I still can't talk about some things. So I think that that's normal. And if you've experienced this, you would know any sort of in that way that sometimes you process things very differently. Even in the article, she said that she didn't even really register what had happened to her until like a month later, and that's when she finally allowed herself to admit it to other people around her. The other big question I'm seeing is why are people so angry at David Dobrik? Why aren't we holding Dom accountable? Because at the end of the day, Dom is the one who did the, he did the crime. David definitely still did other crimes, but Dom is the one who did the crime. Dom is the one who had non with a girl who was unconscious. So at the end of the day, he is the one who committed this crime. And here's the thing, we are holding Dom accountable. Dom had to go private on Instagram. Nobody is not talking about how disgusting Dom is in this situation. I feel like this is somewhat of a deflection tactic and David did this in his own video where he basically was like, well, I don't hang out with Dom anymore because I disagree with things that he did. This is a deflection tactic to kind of shift the blame onto Dom. And should Dom be getting a ton of this blame? Absolutely. He should literally be in jail. Like 100% Dom should be in jail right now. Just because Dom is guiltier than David doesn't mean David isn't also up there. Doesn't mean David and the rest of the vlog squad isn't complicit in all of this. I don't know if this is going to be an unpopular thing to say, but I almost feel like it's a similar level to Dom. It's obviously not the same. What Dom did is obviously worse. But, but twisting that night to make it seem like it was a fun flirty like thing that happened and to and to go and like film Dom all sweaty to film them looking in the room and like gagging at what was happening to film all of that and uploaded it as if it was just this funny thing that happened to millions of people and know that people like knew who she was from that vlog for her, for her to have to relive the trauma of that night through the lens of somebody who knew that she was that drunk who actively wanted her to be that drunk to make his vlog more interesting according to her to have to see that he is just as complicit and he is just is responsible for making her trauma worse. It's, it's, when a girl is that intoxicated, it's not hard to notice that. So a lot of those men in there probably knew that she was incredibly intoxicated and didn't stop Dom from going in a room with these two girls anyway. Also, there's pictures of this girl, like, hugging one of her other friends, like, falling over onto her other friend because she's so intoxicated, and, like, Jeff and David are in the background of the picture. So they can't just sit there and be like, well, I didn't know she was that drunk. She's literally falling over and can't stand up. So yeah, you did know. David and, David and Jeff and Todd and all of the people that were there, Loki, I know this might be unpopular, but even Trisha is complicit in this shit because she said she left before they got back with the alcohol. But if I heard one of my, one of Charles's friends, if I heard one of them tell his other friend, oh, go buy alcohol so we can loosen up these underage girls so they're more willing to hook up with my friend. If I heard one of Charles's guy friends say that, I would have lost my fucking mind. I cannot imagine especially being another woman and sitting there hearing that that is the plan and then being like I'm gonna wash my hands of this I'm gonna leave before shit goes down but I can't imagine like leaving girls there knowing that that is the plan that these men have for them I can't imagine that I think every single person there including and most notably David is complicit in this so that's why David is also getting a bunch of shit just because what Dom did was worse doesn't mean he's not an accomplice if there's a bank robbery and like three people stormed the bank and one of the bank robbers shot the teller obviously the person who shot the teller is like the worst person in the crime, but that doesn't mean the other two guys with guns holding people hostage and traumatizing them aren't also guilty of the crime. At the end of the day, I think that it's very obvious, and I think a lot of us can agree that justice should be had for this victim. And I think that there needs to be justice. I'm hoping that there will be. It doesn't seem like there's going to be as far as court and things like that. And that's really just because, number one, it's incredibly hard to prove stuff like this. And that's why most cases of essay and all of that don't go to court. And that's really just because they are incredibly hard to prove. Um, and that's just the way our justice system is set up. And also there's probably some sort of statute of limitations. Also, the more time has passed, the even more difficult it is. Um, and obviously David really isn't going to be complicit. I think the only thing they could really get any of them for would be Todd and Jeff for buying the alcohol, allegedly, um, because it's Trisha and the victim. Pretty much everyone is saying that it was Todd and Jeff who went and bought it. Well, I think that's the only real case, but even then that's not really enough, I feel. And this is the problem with 
this situation is that it should be a criminal investigation. It should be something that is, you know, brought into courts. It should be something that people serve jail time for because there were victims in all of this. Um, but there won't be. There won't be that. So that's where the sort of court of YouTube and the court of public opinion has to come in. And this is where I say, and I don't say this lightly because I don't, I, you guys know, if you've been watching me for a long time, I'm not big on the like canceled thing. I don't really like to say, oh, let's take careers or whatever. Like, I think that's a lot of times a very extreme measure to take because I do think that people can, you know, acknowledge, grow, all that. But in this case, especially with the, per especially with David, the main person, basically, I, I do think he should be deplatformed. I do think YouTube should be demonetizing his content. Not that he said he was making money from it anyway, but I think YouTube should be demonetizing his content. I don't think brands should be working with him anymore. I don't think he deserves the platform that he has because it's very obvious that he is not responsible enough to handle that platform. It's very obvious that he doesn't give a shit the amount of people that he has hurt and just traumatized via his actions. And I don't think he should be supported in any capacity anymore. I don't. I don't think he should be supported by anybody. Um, and I know YouTube sometimes will take steps to sort of prevent creators from, like, I know they demonetize Shane. I know they demonetize Logan um, and all of that stuff. But I really hope that they take action with David and especially especially Dom. Dom should just be banned from be banned from ever being monetized again or like uploading content. I know that's not how it works, but like he is a disgusting human being. This is not the first time. That's the other thing that kills me. This is not the first time that he has been accused of essay or, you know, assaulting another. This is not the first time he's been accused of assaulting women. Like David has openly supported him in the past after he's done stuff like this. And now they're all clutching their pearls. Like, oh my God, we distanced from Dom because he did these horrible things where it's like, where were you? He's been, he's been accused of this shit. It's all performative. Anyway, but I genuinely think that David Dobrik does not deserve a platform. No, not at all. And I think if the law won't hold him accountable because it can't, I think that that's the job of the viewer and the job of the YouTube community to hold him accountable. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, that's just my opinion on this whole thing. <laughs> Sorry this video took a little bit longer to come out. I had to really organize my thoughts on this one, but hope you guys like this video. Leave your thoughts down below. Obviously, I'm very interested to hear. Um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe or just like or just subscribe or do neither. Honestly, just so happy you're watching me. Thank you so much for being here. My merch, my social media and everything I'm wearing on my face will be linked down below along with uh, links, links and information about the rise in Asian hate crimes um, that have been happening as a result of COVID. Um, and then down there, I'm also going to include the GoFundMes and the just ways that you can help the victims of the shooting that happened a few days ago um, that was a hate crime. Um, learn about it and acknowledge it and know it and donate if you can. Um, it's really important, especially in this topic, especially with what just happened, to be staying as informed as you possibly can on these issues and helping in any way that you can. Um, I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye!